Welcome everyone for another short release announcement. LLVM and Clang 15 are out for this outstanding and flagship low-level virtual machine and compiler infrastructure. If you're new to this stuff, that is an alternative to GCC's compiler collection. Um, initially, university research there around Chris Lutner. And of course, nowadays, widely used not only as a compiler similar to GCC, but also for all kinds of compiler backends for Rust, Zig, uh, probably Nim, and a handful of others, including um, Mesa for lots of hardware isolated 3D stuff for AMD, Intel, and Renovo and such. Due to the nature of this rather large release, lots of stuff changed. I only wanted to give a brief overview here. Um, changes, so because it is a low-level virtual machine, which most people don't even quite realize, it's similar to Java, kind of, sort of, bit code. So they, it's like, now I use opaque pointers, <laughs> really not the most important, why not put more important stuff up, right? I, I read the stuff here, and it's like, dude, so it just means different pointer types, all those i8 and 32 and stuff are now represented single pointer type. It's like, yeah, it's of course certainly a huge internal change, but yeah, you whatever, who cares, right? I, I wonder, they have their link documentation for mi migration. I wonder if that makes stuff internally easier or what is the reason behind that. That is a little bit of a near feature for me, but there you have it. In more interesting news, they now uh, renamed some stuff and also re constant expressions, various instructions has been removed, maybe to simplify stuff. And um, usually, of course, that is for maintenance simplification. If you're wondering why do they do this stuff once they had it, um, I would assume that is for code cleanups, simplicity, and potentially at times maybe even better optimizations and stuff. Some build changes, uh, backend changes, apparently not the most here for AR64, but that is ARM64. Lots of ARM support here, new CPUs, experimental direct backend if you wanted to um, output GPU stuff for DirectX on Windows, potentially even Linux sub subsystem for Windows. Changes to the PowerPC backend. New post instruction, uh, selection paths, generating CTR loops, SSE4 and BMI bit manipulation instruction compatible in strings implementation that, that is um, in Strinsix for porting code, right? If you're wondering what has the SSE4 to do with PowerPC, that is, if you write code once and want to compile it for PowerPC, usually that wouldn't compile, and then you can reuse this uh, code potentially in full or at least in, in parts. Support for 16 byte log free atomics on PowerPC 8 and up. So it's usual what you see on our Linux live stream series. Linux expression is usually the undefined, um, otherwise undefined uh, references for symbols for stuff not implemented. Stack size larger than two gigs, built in min max and other stuff. Of course, because RISC-V is much Newer, lots of changes there. Support for uh, vector extensions and uh, probably bit manipulation. Um, also, some letters, some support for SFNX in, uh, in extensions. Previous video for floating point in regular uh, integer register extensions. We discussed this. Actually, pretty nice extension, especially if you do custom microprocessors or GPUs. Previous video here on this channel. And of course, um, custom. I, I wonder always there was a custom pass here, copy elimination pass to remove unnecessary zero copies. I, I always am amazed that it is not a more generic functionality um, and needs a custom pass, but there we are. Support for half type in SSE2 targets following the x86 PSABI and um, our DPRU instruction on SEN2. Lots of other changes, changes to the C API, um, you guessed it. And so one problem with that is, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm right now building that here, one of our 
all the constant is change and also uh, that is a bit of a uh, too much stuff I guess uh, how much do I have three uh, I need a new SSD obviously naturally and due to the nature that other mission critical packages such as, such as Rust and Mesa are using this for the end user you obviously want to wait for your Linux distribution like T2SDE to test, build and release that. Due to the nature of the complexity and wide use, if you just update that, chances are either you're not using it in full because different shared object names, or if you rebuild stuff, it might not build because changes in the C API. So I will test that. Um, I, I wish, similar to, I wish they wouldn't put park pointers at the front of the changes that they would put their notes for this high profile packages such as Rust and Mesa. I understand that it's not their compiler infrastructure, but it would be a really nice point there for other maintainers, users, developers to have a heads up. For Clang, of course, similar massive changes, many, many more, uh, especially due to the nature of supporting the latest and greatest C and C++ standards, certainly C++ there on the forefront of changes. Clang now supports uh, x86 F0 call used registers for re um, better mitigation, limiting return oriented exploits. What that does is zeroing out all the, select, uh, not all, uh, zero out selected class of registers before function returns. For example, all general purpose registers used within the function, similar to a zero call used register attribute to um, make it harder for or harder or limit the return or in programming exploits. Kling also supports randomized structure layout in C, um, probably other compilers, potentially GCC supports this already. What that does is usually the layout is of course mm, kinder implementation defined for a struct thing U8 uh, in 32, usually mimicking certainly C library and kernel, sync Linux kernel, ABIs or even on the driver side structure layouts of memory mapped IO register maps. And so obviously if you type them out in some certain kind of layout that needs to stay like that for ABI, APIs and hardware to match the hardware however to similar make exploits harder. C compilers can now randomize that um, of course, again, APIs, ABIs, hardware structs you can't randomize. So you would need to be careful to only do that to in-program or at least in-kernel and in-driver stuff. Um, certainly you then want to combine this with a probably more fine-grained attributes of randomized layout for such internal APIs. To make it harder, what that does is if you compile that um, once you can randomize it between builds so that attacker, even if a bug is still in there and zero thing, zero day exploits, the attacker cannot as easily just exploit it, um, especially between versions, between builds and so on and so forth. Support that of course only for C because C++ is too difficult. And um, other such things. Certainly, due to the nature of the complexity of this project, lots of fixes. I'm not even going through all of them because they are massive. Other improvements in diagnostics, uh, C, 2X, C++, 2X, there of so supporting that type traits and other such stuff. New compiler flex, um, C, 2X behavior, and, and so on. Of course, they are more because this project is just so big. You also have linkers, so you have elf linker improvements, CPEC, Rotif, Relox, Load, Android, nah, similar stuff. Especially even breaking changes of incompatible stuff, GNU LD incompatible, so your mileage may vary and you need to be careful and you need to read the manual. And extra clang tools for formatting, indenting, uh, syntax highlighting and other IDE integration changes, improvements and so on, as well as libc++, uh, libc, did I say libc++, um, for this STL implementation and other compiler RT 
and they of course as we have seen yesterday on the more live channel as used in WebAssembly so if you want to compile portable WebAssembly bytecode there for your browser um, Firefox sandboxing or homebrew and other projects that's certainly what you are using there and so all those or most of those improvements also coming there to your WebAssembly portable high performance code there that's basically the summary for this video um, want to try to continue more professional and useful videos so i hope you find this useful this release is out there um, you can grab it there if you want to and also some patches fail or the, the generic i think i had seen that so yeah we can continue with this build so that's basically it leave in the comments below what you think uh, pros cons you're finding and how you appreciate shorter timely news summaries i hope you learned something don't forget to click subscribe and if you want to join more live build things there is this more live channel otherwise have a good day or night and see you next time for more tech fun to come